Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. My name is Steve, and I'm happy to have you here. I see a bunch of people in the chat already. Hello. Uh, this is a continuation from a previous live stream where things <laughs> they didn't quite go to plan. So I appreciate you sticking in and coming back for the second time. And yeah, well, Adam, you just got to start your YouTube channel. That's all I'm going to say. All right, so let's see who is in the chat right now. We have Mike from Mike's Mac Shack, of course. We have Retro Techie said Mac 356. Who else is here? Electric Sows. All right. We have Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Hello, Joe. And who else is here? Mr. Fahrenheit is here. Hello. Um, who else? We have Eric from Blue Scuzzy Fame. Hello, Eric. Uh, let's see. Adam is here, of course. Sean from Action Retro is here. Toby is here. This Does Not Compute is here. Hello, sir. And Raw Elements is here. The Hello Neighbor Show is here. And it this goes on like this. DJ Craze. Garth is here, and I think that's about it for now. Okay, so let's do a very quick recap of what happened last time. I have this iMac here, and I have this camera here. And this iMac has an IRDA port, that's an infrared data port. And this camera supposedly was supposed to have the same IRDA port, except this is a Casio QV3000EX. It is not the Casio 3000 EX slash IR that was sold in Europe. Silly me how we can get those minor things confused. So this, while it looks like it has an IR window, it actually does not apparently, or at least the firmware is not uh, registering that. I'd be very curious to rip this thing open and just see if there's a little diode missing there or if the part isn't missing or whatever, but that's something that, yeah, I, you know, can't really do anything about. So, plan B is to get another camera. Um, yes, there is a problem with this. We'll explain that in a little bit. You'll be surprised, maybe. So, I thought, well, I just need to get another camera that supports IRDA. And getting a list of these devices that... Sorry, my camera's falling off its little... Not really a tripod, but a tripod thing. Um, so I decided, let me go find another camera. And unfortunately, it was a little more difficult than I would have thought. There are a lot of cameras that have infrared capabilities, but some of those are only designed to talk to one another. So you have a Sony camera that could transfer things to a Sony camera. You have HP cameras that could send things to HP printers. Some of them are not really designed to send it to a computer. So um, I thought, all right, well, Let's take a shot in the dark because it was a shot in the dark with this thing and that didn't end up working. I was going to do a standalone video about this. I'm glad I tinkered around with it on a live stream because it wasn't doing me any good sitting in a box. Speaking of tinkering, Tinker Different is a community that just launched. Brand new web form and a Discord channel. I highly suggest you check them out. www.tinkerdifferent.com I'll talk a bit more about those in a bit. But... Plan B. So here was the camera cables and connectors from last time. Ah, and here we have a new box. So what is in this box? Well, not plan nine from outer space. Let's not get there yet. We have some Kodak cameras. And so we have two finds from eBay. This is a Kodak DC290. And there's something very interesting about these cameras. You, <laughs> not anymore because it fell. Um, and this one here, this is a Kodak DC-260. Now, for those of you who are familiar with these cameras, you may know that they have a processor in them that is not too dissimilar to the type of a processor in a Power Mac. That's right, these have PowerPC processors in them. And LGR Clint did an excellent video about running Doom on a similar Kodak camera. Hello, Michael. Thank you very much for joining. Hey, Brian, you got the new MacBook and it arrived dead. Oh my goodness, that's a YouTube video material all on its own. Did you throw a hissy fit and yell at Apple over the phone and record it and then release it on YouTube? Because that's what I would do. Uh, <laughs> hey, Dysfunctional Web, it has been a while. It's still a Mac OS on them. Maybe not this stream, Sean, but we'll see. Uh, but Brian, that stinks. Ho hopefully uh, they like apologized and sent you one post haste with extra like sparkles and stickers on it because, ouch. I have some benchmarks for you to run, by the way. All right, so <laughs> these cameras are... Um, this is actually a... What does it say here? Um, one of them actually said megapixel on it. There's a... I think this is like a... 
Hold on. I have the book right here. Yeah, so here's the, the CD that comes with it. Here's the manual. Now, this is for the DC-260 and the uh, 220. This is heavily marked up, so someone's been here before. Let's jump to the back. Usually in these old manuals, the back will tell you the specs. You can probably Google it faster than I could find it, but I'm not Googling at the moment, so... There you go. We're duck duck going it, whatever you do. And uh, look at that. No specs. Makes you look like an idiot. All right. So <laughs> this stream is off to a good start. So I like how one of the chapters is, where's the film? All right. So camera features, red eye reduction, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? That's not important. Wait a second. Ooh, an IRDA port. Yeah, but doesn't IRDA requires Windows 95? Well, we'll see about that. Um, yeah, these are like a megapixel, two megapixels, three megapixels, something like that. I, I don't know the exact specs of these specific cameras. I was looking at like three of them, um, and I ended up getting uh, the DC nine, uh, 290 and the DC 60, a uh, 260 rather. Uh, so the 290 is a higher spec one. Um, but yeah, all right, so let, let, we're getting sort of besides ourselves here. Let me explain what's going on with these cameras. Eric, I know I saw that. That was so cool about the Quick Take 150. Enjoy it, man. Don't try and run the software under Mac OS 8. Not going to happen. All right, so yeah, that's what this little window is. So here's the Kodak camera. This little black window here is the IRDA window right above the, um, I guess it's a, that the flash? No, I guess it's some sensor or whatever. But yeah, so I think this one has batteries in it. One of the battery compartments was a bit corroded. Yeah, this one, the battery compartments was a bit corroded. But there's also a problem with this. When it came to me, the lens cap was on. I can no longer put the lens cap on. And that's because the lens is stuck in a zoomed in state. Uh, so technically this arrived in not the exact state that the eBay seller said it was in, which, you know, is annoying. But I mean, I paid like $10 for it, so. Yeah, see, it makes noises, but it's not going to retract. Uh, hey, Trina, long time no see. How's it going? Um, so anyway, um, yeah, this camera is stuck in the zoomed state, which is kind of annoying because no matter how much I zoom in or out, the, the lens makes noises, but it doesn't doesn't really do anything. Uh, so yeah, anyway, um, the screen comes on, which is nice. You can see a blurry image there. Uh, I'm going to turn this one off if it wants to be turned off there. This camera is very fussy, it seems, like if, if you're, like the power button doesn't want to work right now. Which is excellent, because it's running on batteries and that's just going to die. Uh, come on, do I have to like tap it twice? Do I have to like hold it down? I have the manual here. I'm not going to read it. There we go. And, <laughs> um, and this one is like on and blinking. Who knows? I think I got it to turn on before. Oh wait, I had to push the display button. Maybe. I had to do that the other one for the screen to turn on. Cool, that one doesn't want to work. And this is all sticky rubber because of how the rubber coating here is degrading over time. So this is the higher spec one. We do have a compact flash card in there. This is a 16 megabyte compact flash card. My goodness. Watch out, folks. 16 megabytes. All right, so uh, we do have power adapters for these, thankfully, because I don't think it's going to uh, run off those batteries forever. Uh, let me grab one of those. as the rest of the crap goes falling to the floor. Oh, it's not a Mac 84 live stream unless stuff is falling all over the place. So I may hear you asking, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Fahrenheit, for your super chat. Eep, why is eight so scared? Because seven, eight, nine. Eh, eh, ah, you'll get it later. Anyway, um, so, uh, let me just make sure I'm not going to unplug anything important here. Is that plugged in? No, it's not. Excellent. All right. So you may be asking, well, Stephen, how are we going to see the iMac? Uh -huh, yeah, hold on. I have the iMac plugged in in a very peculiar way. Let's just do this here. And um, yeah, let's, let's do... Hold on. Hold, please. The magic of me doing things is going to be lost if I don't uh, if I don't do this properly. There we go. Let's just give a little transition over here and then we'll just push this button. There we go. <laughs> well, Stephen, how are we going to see the iMac? I'm glad you asked. There we go. Now we can see the iMac. 
What tomfoolery is this, you may ask? Well, the iMac has a DB15 port on the back, which is where the monitor plugs into. It specifically says this is not a monitor port. I tend to disagree because I plugged a monitor cable right into it. And lo and behold, we can capture the video output from the iMac just like that. Magic. So there you go. Oh, glad to hear everybody is doing well. So we have our screen capture of the iMac. It's not perfect. There's, um, I, I think, a color shift or well, some technical mumbo jumbo. The image is a little bright, but we can manage. But this way we can see what's going on with the iMac. And also I'm not wearing down. The CRT doesn't have really any power to it, I don't think. So it's not going to be going <laughs> and anything like that. Hopefully. Uh, yes, dysfunctional Wombat. The IRDA interconnect cable on the iMac is actually a serial port. Now, I know some have said they could plug serial devices into that and hack the firmware and all this stuff. I haven't actually done that, but I do know it's on the uh, it's on the little firmware part. No user of serviceable parts inside. Uh, okay. All right, so we do have a bit of a situation where some of the images cut off. Let me try and adjust the resolution here. See if that's going to do anything. Yeah, there we go. A little, little tiny for now, but that should be okay. So, we got our iMac working. Running macOS 8.6, just like Jobs intended. And we're going to drag the control strip down there. And, uh, yeah, so this has 256 megabytes of memory. This is a revision, I believe it's a B iMac, and the way we'll tell that is by the graphics chipset. Uh, yeah, I believe this is a revision B model. And the only difference really between that is uh, some of the specs, uh, how it was pre-configured when it shipped, and namely the graphics card. So we have an ATI Rage Pro, whereas the uh, revision A shipped with an ATI Rage 2C. So yeah, this is a little bit uh, different. But either way, the revision A and the revision B are the only ones with the IRDA port. You can notice it because it's that little black window uh, by the speaker. And let me just put the camera there. There we go. That's the IRDA window, uh, like they call them, on the iMac. And so, yeah, that's what, uh, what that is all about. If your iMac does not have that, you do not have IRDA. That is simple as that. Uh, if it's not a Bondi blue uh, color, it uh, is not going to have IRDA. They didn't ship any other ones with IRDA. All right, so um, <laughs> I'm not giving away any iPhones or anything. You guys are nuts, and I love you. All right, so what, what the heck are we going to do? I, I don't know. Um, I think there's a way, because, of course, we have, to, we have to set up this infrared connection somehow. And, of course, being the person I am, I did tons of research on this, huh? No, I did not. Um... See, sometimes there's actually, I think, IR talk, but that's a different protocol, I believe. That's on the PowerBooks. Um, yeah, let's see if there's any control panels or extensions installed, because who knows? Maybe we don't have the right stuff in here. That's a lot of screenshots. I bet that was when I did one of my iMac videos. I needed a heck of a lot of screenshots. Um, for all I know, we don't have the right extension, and that's going to be sad. But let's just see. I think there's a extension or something for the infrared stuff. We're listing all the computers we have or something. Okay, neat, I guess. Uh, let's get a list here. And somebody much smarter than I am is probably screaming at the screen. You need them such and such, you dork. All right, so... I do not see <laughs> anything to suggest. I don't have any drivers here. Oh, the boy, this is fun. We're off to a good start already. I think this is like one of those cursed things that I'm never going to get working. But, you know, what else is new? Uh, so, let's see. Maybe uh, I did something wrong. So, yeah, there is IR Talk and there is IRDA. Let me explain the difference between them thanks to the lovely lowendmac.com, which I'm certainly not reading off the screen because how rude would that be? Um, so, IR Talk and IRDA are different. IR Talk uh, started on the PowerBook 190 and 5300 in 1995. Um, IR Talk is unique to Max, um, and then IRDA um, is incompatible with that. But uh, PowerBooks did have IRDA starting. Uh, I forget when, but it, yeah. So IRDA uh, was adopted on this iMac. Uh, no Max introduced since 2002. Have it built in, and uh, yeah. So. 
I'm just reading some documents here. Yeah, so the iMac A and B revisions, the Lombard Bronze uh, Keyboard PowerBook G3, the Firewire PowerBook G3 Pismo, and the Titanium PowerBook G4 all have IRDA, which is great. Um, so, yeah, hey, Obsolete Techie, how's it going? And hey, anybody else I missed, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Zoom squirting, oh, God. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so... Wait. <laughs> how how does go? How does go? How does go? Um, let me just see something here. There are several versions of the iMac computer. The first two versions uh, had IRDA ports, but not IR talk support. Um, here, iMac infrared communications. Oh, of course, the support article that Apple has is no longer online. So let's go to archive.org, and uh, hopefully they have it archived, and hopefully you'll see me doing something more exciting in the next five minutes, because this is silly. <laughs> Brian. Oh, no, the page is unavailable. Oh, that's terrible. Well, that's horrible. So, uh, hold on. Let's see if we can do it this way. Maybe there's an older version of this page with a different link, and... No? What the heck? Well, that's lame. Hold on. Yeah, Apple likes to uh, redo all of their knowledge base pages, like, every, like, second. So all the links don't work no more. All right, so I'm viewing a version from 2009. Let's see if, if this helps. One moment, please. And you're, you're all stuck in for the ride now, guys. Sorry. This is <laughs> 18 minutes in, and we're no closer than we were last week. <laughs> or whenever it was I streamed. I can't remember. All right, so let's see if this link wants to open up. Ugh, that's not encouraging. That is not encouraging at all. Um, yeah, this page is available on the web, and then it goes to a page that is not available on the web. Uh, let me just see if somebody backed this up externally somewhere. This is fun, 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 fun. All right, so the article I'm looking at now, just to share it in the chat, because everyone else is going to be like, huh? Uh, in the chat, I'm just pasting it there. So that's where the article is, and that article talks about infrared communications. There's an article there, 58012, called IMAC, colon, Infrared Communications, which I think would be excellent to read. Unfortunately, that link is dead. If any of you find that link, or whatever the heck, yay. Uh, I don't have it right now, so that's going to be a problem. Is there a disc in here? Yes, there is. There's an iMac Restore CD, and that's probably what I used. Uh, let's just have a look in here. System Labor 462. Look at that. Hey, Bruce is here. Did you get your SSD? I hope you did. Smash that like button. All right, so here's the hard drive image, I believe, that I used to restore... This iMac, uh, let's see if it actually has that extension in here. We have iMac modem extension, Intel raw video, IRDA lib, hey, look at that. So we have these things, but they're not probably enabled. So maybe they're actually here, but I'm being a dork. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. All right, cool, so let's go through here and uh, see what is deselected. How, how silly would it be if these extensions were here but just not selected? And I don't see them. Yeah, it should be IR tool. Well, we could just manually install them and cross our fingers and hope for the best because that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you madman! He's a madman! A madman! Alright, so... Let's view this by list to make sure we're not leaving out any others. We have these IR land scanner, IRDA lib. I, yeah, sure, why not? Let's copy all those. And let's do a reboot and hope nothing crashes. Yeah, I have a bad feeling that that Apple tech uh, stuff is just gone. 
I mean, I'm sure somebody has an archive somewhere, but it's it's not, you know, within a five second search, easily findable. Oh boy. And sorry if I'm uh, super delayed to respond to like social media stuff and stuff. It just, life has been uh, a whirlwind the past month, year, whatever. So apologies. All right. So while that boots up, let's just see here. Just trying to see if I thought I had something saved here. I might not have. I had something bookmarked on my phone. Anyway. Let's wait for this to boot up. Hasn't crashed yet. What are we what are we going on about here? Elite books, uh, that's nice, I guess. Uh, Ooh, one more month till you get your MacBook Pro. Very nice, Violet. Violet. However you want to pronounce that, it's probably better than how I'm pronouncing it. All right, so if we go into some things here, I believe... Now, I could be confusing this with PowerBook with IR Talk, and I'm not. There we go. Infrared port via Apple Talk. So we could actually use Apple Talk. And let me uh, change to a different resolution here. Uh, maybe that'll work. Maybe... Ooh, it didn't like that. <laughs> Now well, we have to wait for the resolution to work itself out. All right, hold on. Hold, please. Uh, control panels, monitors, and sound. Let's get a healthy eep out of this thing, huh? There we go. And, yeah, we want to show all the resolutions here. We want a nice, healthy 640 by 480. Uh, 800 by 600, rather. That's good enough. Hopefully that's a little bit easier for you guys to see. So we have Ethernet. We also have Infrared. And we have remote, so now we have infrared here. Yes, you can transfer uh, things over Apple Talk via IRDA, I believe. Uh, I don't know if you could do both things, but... Um, now, I'm not 100% sure how this essentially works. I really have no idea. So we're going to be exploring this together, I suppose. Uh, getting port information. <laughs> You're not going to get much, buddy. Uh, and I don't know if having Apple Talk enabled with IRDA is going to do anything good or not, you know. Uh, so, I don't know if this is going to help anything, but I guess we'll find out. So, one of these cameras, this one, plug it into power, and we're going to turn it on. And I haven't explored the menu or anything, so we'll, <laughs> we'll see if... Uh, that's right, I have to press display first. I'm in capture mode. There's this little jog wheel on the back right here that you set the settings in. Hey, Justin, welcome to the stream. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. I do have a second iMac. It is on the shelf somewhere, and I'm not grabbing it right now. <laughs> I, I probably can do it with a power book, but see, if I get this working, the whole idea here, guys, is if I get this working, um, I'll do a, a scripted video about explaining how it works and all that stuff, but I don't know yet, so... We're going to do that. I'll do some Apple Talk IRD8. I'm sure it's going to be painfully slow. Uh, slower than local talk, I'm sure. All right, so if I go to connect, there's an option for connect here. Let's see if anything comes up on the screen. Uh, the camera seems like it's off. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we do have the manual. So instead of suffering, let's just look the darn thing up. <laughs> yeah, if this was a scripted video, I'd have no subscribers. All right, so we have uh, accessing your pictures, making your skeletons look their widest. No, do it live. Uh, 
Well. Sorry, guys. This is probably very boring. And the pages are coming out of the book. That's a great sign. That's an excellent sign. That is, that is great. Review mode allows you to view, edit, and organize your pictures. Connect allows you to connect your camera to the computer using Kodak Digital Science Easy Picture Software, whatever the heck. All right, that's a little confusing. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, so let's, let's go to the section where we're transferring pictures. Maybe that tells us how to use our lovely IRDA. Which connection? Here we go. Let's let's do some reading here. Page 6-2. You're way off. Which connection? Uh, Windows 95. You could use Serial or IRDA. Alright. Uh, talks about Serial. USB. Infrared. Infrared is invisible light that the camera uses to transfer pictures through the air without cables or wires. What the heck is the difference between a cable and a wire? Anyway, like your television remote, the camera requires a clear line of sight between its infrared transceiver and the infrared port on your computer. IRDA, Infrared Data Association, compliant devices use both a transmitting mode and a receiving mode, which allows these devices to acknowledge the information was received, generate responses, and even automatically detect the presence of another infrared device. Hope this is page turning because uh, <laughs> I can't turn the page. Uh, IRDA 1.0 has the same maximum data rate as a serial port 115 kilobits per second or kilobytes, whatever. Capital K, lowercase b. I'm tired. Um, on the camera, place the camera facing the computer's infrared transceiver. While in the review mode, so we have to be in the review mode, not the connect mode. My mistake. Uh, place the camera on the review mode. You can transfer pictures with the camera. You refer to copying marked pictures. All right. So we're in the review mode. We have uh, the camera could not display this picture. Uh, probably because we're using a memory card uh, which had older photos on. Here's a photo we could use. This is of my Game Boy Pocket. There we go. Ah, uh, well, there, there you go, Sad Mac. You answered my question. Now I feel like a dork. That's okay. All right, so, um, how do we, okay, mark. Okay, I marked the picture. I marked it. Let's see if we can figure out how to send this darn thing. Um, send, here we go. Camera to camera. Well, sure, why not? How do I select, <laughs> it's like, I could mark things and unmark things, but that that's all it lets me do. Uh, oh, oh, send. There's a send button. All right, here, here goes. I have nothing configured on the Mac. Let's just see if anything happens. Receiving camera ready? Sure. Connecting. I doubt it's going to do anything. <laughs> yes, Bruce, please, please regale us with the story of you... Ham fisting this camera, I assume, and breaking it, because that sounds like fun. That sounds exciting, Adam. So this is about, uh, I'd say, eight inches away from the iMac. Maybe now it's like more like ten inches. Here, we'll move the side camera so you can actually see what the heck I'm doing here. There we go. Hot infrared action. Oh come on, just this cable is always just a little bit. There we go. Uh, so nothing is actually working here. <laughs> Were you expecting anything else? Um, so let me just make this a little bit bigger so we could all watch the failure in action here. Let me put the camera down for a second so I could actually use the keyboard like a normal individual. There we go. Uh, so the camera is here, the infrared is here, they should be a talking, but the ain't. So this is very exhilarating, I hope. Um, so I apologize in advance to everybody, everywhere, all the children in the world, I'm sorry. Let's see if there was a control panel that didn't copy over. Because the extensions were in here, so... And that's the wrong thing. Uh, configurations, that's what it was. <laughs> Fool people by using a USB cable? No, I'm not about that. Alright, maybe there was an, a control panel or something. Let's go to Claris. No, we don't need that. All right, well, the keyboard is too far away to reach because I'm an idiot. Oh, 
Okay. Well, let's see if there's anything. Infrared! Look at that! There's a freaking control panel! Well, we're gonna do this dance again. Go to our system folder, drop that in, say okay, and we're gonna reboot. Maybe that'll fix it, who knows? It didn't copy the eject app! Oh, I hate that! That's why I have on my Mac84.net website, I have a folder with the eject app on there. <laughs> oh, boy. Alright, well, uh, camera did not establish connection. Be sure IR ports are aligned and try again. Don't worry, Mr. Kodak. We'll be trying again whether you like it or not. There we go. Yeah, there was a software update that eventually let the eject key work, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a control strip module. Well, I'll just use the control panel. Every time I reboot, it's like <laughs> adding 20 minutes to the stream. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I see, I thought I could have swore that I did the 8.5 install from the original CD. And then I did an 8.6 update, but maybe that update didn't update some things. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, we're waiting for 8.6 to load up here. Ain't that fun? Almost there. All right, so let's use the right mouse. How about that? Is there not a camera to computer option on the camera? There is not. But I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Hopefully. <laughs> Who knows? All right, infrared built-in, selected by Apple Talk. Notify me if devices are... All right, infrared is a point-to-point -point device. All right, let's just see if it, if it detects anything. I have the camera about a foot away. Ready to connect. Yes. Connecting. Oh, look at that! Look at that! That's the freaking name of the camera! Now, it's not going to do anything, I don't think, but... <laughs> All right. We're getting somewhere, kind of. We know the infrared thing works. Hey. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Hey, Andrew. Zodium. Anybody else? Stormcrash. Chris. Shady Robot. Anybody else I didn't say hi to? Uh, Commodore Fan 64. Hello. All right. So, maybe because it's set up to use Apple Talk, and this is not going to be Apple Talk, maybe that's why it's upset. So let's change Apple Talk to Ethernet. And let's see if this solves some things. Who knows? All right. So selected by nothing. So yeah, nothing. I don't think nothing appeared in the finder. Uh, I don't think it's gonna like appear as a disc or something like that. I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that maybe some software is needed, not from Kodak, because they clearly are not supporting the Macintosh in this regard. They only say Windows 95. Um, let's just see if I close that. That's a take a long time to close. Hey, Bill, how's it going? You know what? Let me just uh, if there's a if there's a there's a control strip that'll drive me crazy, so let's just... Let's just take a look-see, just in case. Just in case, just in case, just in case. Media bay. That's an interesting one. Well, let's see, we have battery monitor, CD strip, hard drive spin down. Media bay. I don't know why... Oh, that's probably for the power book. Yeah, okay. Nope, no IR thingy. That's all right. All right, so we have the control panel, though. So let's make a shortcut to that, because we're probably going to be opening that like every 10 seconds here. Of 
course, it's not cleaned up, so it's not going to be... There we go. Uh, and where's that? Yeah, we could go ahead and... Where's the trash? There, right above it. All right, cool. Okay, so... Hey, Tech, how's it going? Uh, they could have, but it's probably long gone on their website. All right, so if I send a camera... Oh, never mind. Hold on. Let's try this again. How did I do this again? Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, and I want to delete it. Menu? Oh, yeah. Send. Continue. Connecting. Now, the finder's not alerting me that there's a device nearby. Although the infrared thing said it should. So if I open this up, and now it says there are no devices in reach. I mean, oh, yeah, so it's, it shows the Kodak. I don't think there's any software that is uh, going to be able to det detect this. So did Steve Jobs lie to us when he said you could beam your digital photos from your camera? Blah 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 blah. blah. Um. Yep. And now, now uh, it has an error message on the camera because it couldn't find it, and it's saying blah. Let me just look in the manual real quick to make sure I'm I'm performing the proper procedures. At least for Windows, but uh, I like how they, they talk about Apple QuickTime movies, and Apple is in all caps. Where the heck is it? Right there. All right. File transfer on the iMac. File transfer? You mean like file sharing? Or am I drawing a blank here? Why does that ring a bell? Again, it might not be installed on this damn system. <laughs> I mean, Kodak is only supporting IRDA on Windows 95. So this may just be another useless effort. But if the IRDA is compliant with that, it, it should technically work. Oh, here's the resolution of the DC-260, so that's the lower end model. 1536 pixels by 1024. How about that? Um, well, there's a there's a Kodak CD in here, but I don't think it has anything. I remember using some program to move files. Yeah. Um, let's do some exciting Googling. IRDA Macintosh file transfer. I mean, Apple Talk would do it, but it's not Apple Talk. Oh, wait a second. Macworld has an article from 1998. Yeah, this says you want to do Apple Talk. Launch the Apple IR file exchange. That's right, there was a file exchange in the Apple Extras folder of your hard disk. Apple Extras folder. I bet it's not in here and we're going to have to copy that over again. Yeah, of course not. All right, well, it's a good thing I have this restore disk plugged in here. You should just reinstall the Mac OS, Steven. Quiet. All right, so. Watch it not be in here. Uh, internal modem, macOS tutorial, monitors extras. Yeah, okay. Not seeing it. Not seeing it. Uh, so this is called IR File Exchange. Nope. Nope. Alright, so... Launch IR File Exchange, which comes installed on every Mac with an infrared port. Mm. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, fun never stops, does it? Utilities. No. Apple Lectures, are we sure? Tutorial, internal modem? No. Oh, what about um, 
There's that archive. There's an Apple FTP archive. I wonder if it's there. Uh, there we go. I'm on archive.org with it. Uh, okay, here's the. We could look. I think there's a way. Yeah, you can browse the collection. So let's search for IR underscore. Well, it's a huge list. Uh, let's just search for the word transfer. It's a long list, but I'm not seeing it. Poo. Um, IRDA, maybe? IRDA printers. Oh, that's for the Newton. I do not need it for the Newton. All right, let's just search for IR transfer tool with brackets and the word Apple. I didn't, it said application extras or whatever the heck. Not uh, uh, Acrobat, Fax, Nanosaur, QuickTime. Not seeing it. Nope. Huh. This unfortunately seems to me like one of those things that would be on a disc and not available elsewhere. It should be an Apple Extras. And this is this is the iMac Restore disk that came with the darn thing. But see, I did a search on the entire system just for the word IR. Well, I don't think I was that specific, was I? Well, let's just do it anyway. It's going to come back with a lot of crap. Nope, oh, I actually did not. How about that? What about... Oh, that poor CD-ROM drive. Well, we'll find this in a second. I mean, I have, I have a bunch of discs here. I'm, I'm just lazy. I'll, I'll look through them. Yeah, so that's what we have installed. The tool is there. Yeah, so nothing. Yep, that's... That's all that's on the system and the disk. So, me thinks... You know, let, yeah, let me search for the word infrared because although the Macworld article says it's IR, maybe they were abbreviating. Oh, oh, we have a control panel and that's exactly what we were looking at before. Poo. Ah, poo. All right, well. Some modem scripts and junk, but yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this article is talking about power books, and this article is dated 1998. I would assume this is talking about some version of the Mac OS 8. Let's see, Mac OS 9, 8.6, 8.5, 8.1, 8.0, none are mentioned in the article, but December 1998. Let's bring up our little friend Mac Tracker here, which remembers things much better than I do, and, uh... <laughs> Why is it not installed? Oh, come on. I don't have it on this machine? There it is. Oh, it's on the friggin' App Store. I'm not downloading... Wait, no. Come back. Hold, please. Copying Mac Tracker to the Applications folder, where it should actually live. I mean, I'm not one for being super demanding of where things are placed, but usually an application should live in an Applications folder. Verifying the application, yes. It's so malicious, you have to verify. Are you sure you want to open this? Yes. Yeah, so the device does appear, Mr. Fahrenheit, in the control panel, surprisingly enough. Um, but it seems like we're missing a file transfer software, which would make sense. 
All right, so December 98, that would put uh, 8.5 being the operating system. 8.5. Now, it would make sense, folks. It would totally make sense because I believe this iMac Restore disk, which I'm about to eject, is for 8.6. And the majority of the iMacs that we're shipping... Let's see. I wrote down the number, but I didn't write the operating system. Uh, six nine one two zero oh, nine zero oh, eight. All right, let me just double click on it. It'll tell me. Um, it may make sense because if this is a restore disk for eight point six, it might not have that IRDA tool on there. Because eight point six was a May nineteen ninety nine. This article was written about IRDA in December ninety eight, and eight point five came out December uh, October nineteen ninety eight, and December ninety eight eight five one came out. So, what version of software is on here? Uh, what is on here? <laughs> Tells me everything about this. Looks like we're going to have to open this up. Eight dot five and eight dot five. Okay, well there goes that theory. So this is actually eight dot five. Okay. Interesting. I didn't know application support was that old. I thought it was a Mac was not anything. All right. So there goes that theory. Uh, what the heck is dark side? Is that a screensaver? The dark side. System friendly screensaver. Oh, yeah, it's special. I forgot I installed that. I apologize if it looks like I'm uh, on my phone a lot today. We have a bunny that is recovering from a procedure, and it's imperative that she keeps her little cone on, and she's very good at taking it off. So I'm just monitoring her on my phone now and again just to make sure she's not getting herself into trouble. Alright, so. What the heck are we going to do? <laughs> Perhaps a PowerBook Restore Disk would have it on there. Yeah, let's, let's follow that train of thought, shall we? You want to entertain that? Let's go to Ye Olde Macintosh Garden, which has the best stuff. If you're going to grow a Macintosh... Go to Macintosh Garden. Uh, so let's go to, excuse me, uh, Mac OS 8.6 here, and we have our CD sets here on Macintosh Garden. And there's one for the PowerBook. Uh, PDQ, which one was that? Uh, now I'm confused. Hold on. Let's go back to that Macworld article. Oh, thank you very much. She's a trooper, I'll tell you that. So, PowerBook G3. Oh, that's the Wall Street. Okay. Um, maybe it's the Lombard one? I always mix up the PowerBook G3s. I always mix them up. That was the uh, 333 megahertz one. Okay. With the bronze keyboard. Okay, yeah. So if I download the disk image for that...
There's an 8.6 disk image for that. I'm going to download that. Hopefully that actually downloads. Well, we'll download from the other server. Anyway, thank you very much, Trina. While that happens, because that's going to take four minutes, let's talk about something neat. Now, this is all Kai Robinson's fault. It's all his fault. He's a, he's a horrible, horrible pusher of eBay links that he finds. Look at this thingy. You guys are talking about video and stuff. Look at, look at this. This is a double thingy. There's two boxes shrink wrapped together. One of them, pretty okay, I guess, USB PCI card for the Max. The other thing, ooh, this is up my alley. A USB, probably 1.0, yeah, it has to be 1.0, video capture device. Can you imagine how slow that is? But we have a USB 1.0 capture device. Yes, it is sealed. Uh, it was uh, $40, which, not too bad. Um, works with iMac. Uh, how about that? Um, and, uh, yeah, you can have uh, your composite or S-video captured on here. Capture and share anytime, anywhere. Interview takes you there. Plug and play in minutes. Minutes! Merge and transform your videos. A $485 value. Thank you, Strata Video Shop. And uh, QuickTime 4 compatible. Send your videos to any computer, anywhere via the web. So that's something I'll uh, look into. And it's funny because uh, I noticed this. A friend of mine pointed out. Uh, where is it? Uh, here it is. So you see that iMac there? I didn't even read the text, but it says, Interview is designed for the Macintosh enthusiast. Even a monkey can be cool. And I'm like, what? Is that like telling people that you're a monkey if you're a Mac user? I don't understand. But um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Now, if you have an iMac DVSE, don't use USB for video capture. Ugh. Use Firewire. What are you thinking? That's the way to do it. But anyway, that's something I'm going to be tinkering around with, I'm sure. And I'll regret it when I do, because that'll, that'll be a thing. Okay, so we still got two minutes left. I'm downloading a, a disk image, and um, I'll be able to transfer it over the network, hopefully. But, um, yeah, it's probably like uh, a 320 by 240. May, maybe a little higher? I don't know. Uh, that little box might be compressing it. I don't know. I've never had luck with USB ones that are for the Mac. Only, only had luck with, really with FireWire ones. Only recently I picked up this little... Uh, this is some knockoff, but it's an easy cap one. I picked this up off of uh, eBay or Alibaba or one of those places. It was like 15 bucks or something like that. Um, it works okay. You have to install a driver from a CD, and it only works after you do that, and it kind of works with OBS. And then I gave one to a friend, and she was using it for a while, and then it just stopped working. So, yeah. I don't know why. But I prefer the uh, FireWire ones. All right, so we're just downloading a system install disk, which might have that infrared tool on it. I hope it does. And if it does, then we're in business. If not, we're screwed. Um, <laughs> yes, this, this USB 1 capture card, and then it was also sealed with the USB... PCI cards. There you go. It was a bundle. A bundle, bundle, bundle. You know, if any good recapping services for a Mac Color Classic needs a recap, one of the gold pins at the end of the motherboard came off. Ooh, that's more of a repair, buddy. Um, so, I do recapping. I am quite slammed as far as my my backlog, and I should be working on that stuff now, but I, I don't have all my tools set up right here to do that. Uh, what I will say, uh, Anthony, is if you go to mac84.net forward slash services, you use that little form there to send me a message, describe and send pictures if you can, or send me an email, mac84tv at gmail.com, mac84tv as in television at gmail.com. Uh, I will get back to you. It may not be in a, in a day or two, but I'll get back to you. Um, maybe that's something we could fix. The, the gold connectors on the end of the... I'm assuming that edge connector that goes into the computer, that may be very difficult to fix. I am not sure. I've not encountered that before, but I'd love to help you try. So, all right, we have the PowerBook CD launched here. 
uh, Apple script extras, internal modem, language kits, network extras, open transport, Ew, no we don't want that, um, software installers, internet access, system software, Mac OS 8.6, so this has 8.5 and 8.6 on it apparently, or maybe it's just, just the way this is set up. Um, desktop folder, important extra system software, battery manager, Mac OS ROM, modem tune-up, system folder, uh, let's see, yeah, no, that's, that's not the, um, huh, software install, I guess I have to go to, sorry, I'm just trying to understand where this might be, but it's probably as part of the installer itself. So that's not really going to help me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this disk image over to the iMac over the network. Let's do that. You're very welcome, Anthony. Uh, I hope we can get that working, or at least I can give you some pointers there. But uh, the more photos you send, the better understanding I have of what's going on. So that'll help. Uh, so let's start up file sharing here. Getting a headache all of a sudden, that's fun. We don't need no stinking password. Wrong, wrong keyboard. All right, and uh, oh, you know what? This this old Mac is not going to see. Well, all right, we'll just do it this way then. Well, there you go. Thomas has a LC575 board for sale. Although, uh, Anthony, are you uh, aiming to put that into your Color Classic, or what do you, uh, I'm assuming, uh, that logic board? I mean, a 575 is a nice upgrade, gives you a nice speed boost, but if you want to remain original and have it a little bit slow, or you have different plans for it, that's, uh, yeah. I plug the camera to the 8500. Now, there is a USB cable for this. There's a uh, serial port here, and that uh, goes into the camera which has a serial port uh, right here. And so there's two cables. There's one that's a serial port to serial port, and this is serial port to USB-A. So, but that's not the point of this. It's not the point. It's not the point. That's not the point. I'm sure there's somebody who loves downvoting my videos, and to that, I don't care. Uh, well, thank you. All right, so we're transferring this over to the Mac Mini. Once it does that hop, then we'll copy uh, it over to the iMac here. Ah. Type in our password here. And I typed way too many letters. Yeah, I know. I know. There we go. Transfers. And we should have PowerBook disk image here. And we'll also need this. That's going to be able to mount that disk image for us. Not enough room. How much sp Oof. Ouch. Yeah, I didn't know I was... Ouch. That's... <laughs> what the heck is on this thing? Oh, do I have like the Photoshop disk on there? That'll eat up some space. Yeah, there we go. Oh, the Sims. Oh, what the heck were you doing on here, Steven? You dork. All right, we could download these again anytime. Uh, let's trash. Where's the trash? The heck with you, Sims. We'll deal with you later. All right. That's going to take its sweet time. <laughs> apple cubes. I don't have a room full of apple cubes. It's a nasty rumor, you silly billy. <laughs> Safety deposit box. 
All right, so we're transferring files. Oh, boy. So uh, uh, Thomas B, uh, Anthony is asking you where you have listed that board for sale, whether it be a forum or whatever the heck. Let him know. We have two Tom B's in the chat. This is confusing. So how about this? Um, I'm trying to think of a, a good solution for you both there. All right, how about this? Thomas B., the one who wants to list that LC575 board, send me an email, mac84tv at gmail.com, and Anthony is going to send me an email also, and I'll put you two in touch together. How about that? Instead of you putting out your public information or whatever the heck. Um, sound good? Again, my email is mac84tv at gmail.com. So Thomas B. and Anthony, you send me an email, I'll hook you guys up. How about that? You've seen the Apple computer pillows. Yes, I have. Throwboy does some excellent stuff. I have the tiny ones. I have the little beanbag ones because I have no space for those big pillows. Now, if I got them, I'd love them. I'd find a space for them. Thank you very much, Trina. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they look pretty. They look pretty. All right. You're very welcome. <laughs> yes, the mole rack is, is not going any, anywhere anytime soon. Uh, hello, Alexander. How you doing? How much RAM is in the pillows? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. Matchmaker. The, the scuzzy matchmaker. I'll give you a good scuzzy ID. And let me buy it. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if Anthony turns it down, Adam will buy it off you. Alright, so we're almost done transferring this disk image. Really? We've only been here an hour? For an hour? It feels like 20. That's what, that's what everyone else feels like. Quiet. Alright, so... <laughs> where else was the... Wait, didn't I copy over? I thought I did. Well, I guess not. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was just under something. All right, yeah, that's why. All right, so this is going to help us mount these disk utilities here. Let's copy that. We don't need you anymore. Put you in the trash. And we're going to put this in the applications folder. First, we're going to make it alias, and we're going to go, wee! Oh, it's already in there. How about that? Whatever. I forgot I had it here already, but that's okay. Oh, it's a but what? I do have toast. Oh, what the heck am I doing here? Does it just like not have enough free space? What the heck is going on? <laughs> is it the name? Is the name too long? I got Oh, you know what? It's probably the resource fork. Hold on. Let's find a, an appropriate resource fork. That's a lot of toast. There we go. And where's our good old friend ResEdit? On a Macintosh, on a retro Macintosh, it's never something simple, folks. Please tell me ResEdit's on here. Please tell me ResEdit's on here. Oh, thank... Thank Jeebus. Oh, just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eep yourself. I said eep yourself. Oh, come on. I bet you stuff it. <laughs> it's stuff it installed. Oh, thank the maker. Hopefully, it's going to know what to do with this. Please. Oh, you got to be kidding. There it is. Thank goodness. Yay. Isn't this exciting, folks? I know it's not, but just bear with me here. The joys of vintage Macintosh. You're going to go dizzy and cry. Oh, God, he's singing again. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So, got that. Got that. Put you in the trash. Put both of you in the trash. Applications. Res edit. You deserve your space on the dock, uh, desktop, and your icon's gone. That's a shame. All right. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to get file info. 
We're gonna forget where we found the toast image. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, that's right, it's searching over the network too. Let's just search for the local disk. There might be something on here. And there's not a good one. All right, so let's find one on here. First aid for the Apple II, Apple IIe, ooh, that's fun. All right, so where the heck is this? This is on transfers. Of course, everything's on transfers. That's the, that's the hot place to be. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something very fancy here. Look close, this might save your life one day if you're a retro Macintosh dork like me and have nothing better to do. All right, so we're gonna find a file like this. And we're gonna get info on that. And this is very important. The Macintosh has something called a resource fork. That is a part of the file that tells it what type of a file it is and what applications can open it, etc. On Windows, you just type a period and you put in the extension and Windows goes, oh, that's what it is. The Mac doesn't really care about that. So we have GIMG and CDR3. So let's get info of the thing that uh, we are trying to open that doesn't have anything associated with it. And you see it's blank. That's a problem. So we're going to go ahead here and rename this GIMG. CDR3. Now the capitalization is important and I screwed that up. So G I M G. We're gonna hit save. And sometimes it complains that there are too many characters. Just keep deleting and try again. Sometimes there's a space. There we go. No space that time. And looky looky. We have a proper icon that will open in a proper piece of software and mount correctly. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. Hopefully you learned something. I am embarrassed to tell you how long it took me to learn that. Okay, so let's do an install and see if we could just like install an extension. I don't know. Oh, add remove. Alright. <laughs> That's not going to help. Oh, that, there we go, here we go, here we go. Networking and connectivity. Ah, poo. <laughs> oh, why, why would it be simple? Why, why would, why? Why, 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 why? Uh, uh, compatibility, file exchange, what the heck? No, that's PC file exchange. That's the wrong file exchange. <sighs> yeah, you have to watch the uh, five-hour live stream to get the one-minute uh, <laughs> thing about uh, whatever's. I should make that a separate thing. No? Come on, there has to be... Unless it's just not in here, that would be hilarious. No, see, so has the infrared control panel. Compatibility, mobility, Apple IR file exchange. Look at that! It's there! Holy crow! We're just installing that. <laughs> That's that one file. Yeah, you could check that disk all you want. <laughs> just install that one file. I did, I did check that, uh, Mr. Fahrenheit, but there's a CD extras folder. Didn't seem to have it in there. But let's hope this works. I'm excited. There's a lot of motherboards here. There's a lot. Come on, check the hard drive already. I don't got all day. All right, I'm going to go upstairs and get a glass of water because I'm going to, like, pass out. I'll be right back.
and it's still checking. Ugh. Let's check on little uh, fussy bunny upstairs. All right, she's okay. No, 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 no. Let's let's not have people trying to trying to come to my house. Let's let's not do that, please. All right, less than a minute. Have you guys ever played around with IRDA? Yes, a waskily wabbit. Eh. Uh, because IRDA is fun. Fun IRDA. <laughs> Here all night, folks. Restart. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> I am very satisfied with the iPhone 13. I got the iPhone 13 Pro because I only upgrade my phone every like four or five years, so I figured why the heck not. Uh, I was upgrading from an iPhone 8. This thing is so much faster, and probably because of the air was a problem with my iPhone 8. But uh, yeah, love the camera. Um, I went on a, a vacation recently. I just took this. I didn't take my uh, DSLR or anything, and I was pretty satisfied with the photos this thing took. I, I know the DSLR is going to give me a better zoom and raw and all that stuff, but you know what? This is not too bad, really. I was very impressed with the 3x uh, zoom on this thing. Ah, uh, yes, Nintendo Game Boy had the infrared. I played around with that. Palm Pilots had infrared. I played around with that as well. Yeah, see, IR transfer was like one of those things that was like going to be the hot new thing, but it was slow, like a serial connection. It was slow. And then all of a sudden, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi came out a few years later, and everyone's like, well, screw this. <laughs> Who needs line of sight when you have USB, and then you have wireless things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so... Yeah, it was it it died for a reason, let's just say that. I know, I always thought IRDA was cool. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. I always thought it was neat. Alright, so where the heck did it install this thing? <laughs> That's gonna be the question. Uh is it in the uh, Apple Extras folder? Oh, look at it. There it is. Apple IR File Exchange. Watch, I'm going to open this and it's going to be like, this is not compatible with your computer. <laughs> did I tell you? What did I tell you? You can't send or receive files while IRDA is using the infrared port. I'm going to let the iMac talk. Okay, so this file sharing, sending, whatever, is for IR Talk. Okay? IR Talk is not supported by this IRDA port. IR Talk was in the earlier PowerBooks. So, what the heck? <laughs> you can't send or receive files while IRDA is using the infrared port. You use the infrared control panel to allow IR Talk to use the port. But see, if I open this, it's not going to give the option to select that because this hardware is IRDA only. It's not IR Talk. So there goes that. Poo, poo, booty, poop, poop, poop. No, IRD, IR Talk is an incompatibility with these. It's it's not going to be a thing. Oh, virtual PC. Oh gosh, that's 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 going to be another five hours. Let's let's not. <laughs> All right, let's let's try this at least. Let's see if the IR on these stupid cameras is actually working, uh, because we could share files between two cameras. Let's not forget. So let's let's just try that, just for the sake of sanity here. And it sounds like I'll have some more research to do, unfortunately. Um, so let's go to review. I don't know if the screen... Oh, I was about to say the screen doesn't work on a note, but there it goes. 
Alright, so the screen's on that. Let's turn this one on. And I'll get a better angle for you guys in a moment. Let me just, uh... Ugh. I'm starting to get a headache. That's not fun. This might have to be a, an, an under three hour live stream. I know, I know. Disappointing. Okay. Alright, so it's loading pictures there. Camera cannot display this picture. That's nice. Go to the next one. That's one of my cat's butt. That's not a good one. Could not display the picture. You were just displaying it. Okay. All right. So they're kissing. All right. So um, let's. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, let's. Uh, how do I send this? I forget. Oh, Mark. Sure. Mark that for a good pal mark and then go to send receiving camera ready no maybe not I don't know um, menu oh receive here we go waiting for connection okay and then this goes continue and let's see it says receiving maybe I don't know Oh, there's a progress bar. There's a progress bar. Where the fridge is the camera. Uh, where's the other mouse? Where's the other mouse? Ah, uh, wrong OBS thing. There we go. Look at that. Stupid cable is caught on the box. There we go. Sending pictures. This is sending it to the other camera. Look at this insanity we got going on here. Oh, you can see the infrared blink. Look at that. Look at that. You can see it blink. Look at that! That's cool! Alright! Attempted one! Completed one! And one picture received. Can, can we view the picture? Or are you just going to be dumb? A done? This camera sure takes its time, even though it has a PowerPC processor in here. Good night. Thank you, Retro Techie. Why is it not showing any of the pictures? These cameras are wonky, man. Oh, there it is. There's the picture I sent. It was of a keyboard. How about that? Yes. <laughs> the UI is Comic Sans. No, that means it's that means it's of exceptional quality, Joe. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, so at least we know the IRDA talks uh, works between the two cameras. That's at least something we know. Um, so yeah, that works, and you could see that the uh, the little light was flashing because that's infrared light. So how the heck is this going to work on the iMac? I'm going to guess it doesn't. That's what I'm going to guess. Um, let me let's see something. Hold on. Let's go to TCP/IP. All right, this is not going to change anything. I doubt it. Let's turn everything to IR. Let's... You can't even see me because I'm an idiot. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. People are, like, nodding. Yeah, you're, you're an idiot. All right, so we're going to go... That's the iMac that we're going to look at. Um, all right, so let's turn everything to IRDA because... Why not? And I doubt this is going to change anything. This will probably just make it more annoying. I don't think the Easy Share software has anything, man. I'm telling you, the manual doesn't say it. Yeah, hold on, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you, what are you yelling at me about, sir? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Well, the dialogue is telling me that I have to use IR Talk, which I can't. All right, there's an installer. What the heck is on here? Let's see. Probably some garbage photo manipulation software. Yeah, plug-in for the Photoshop and what's it? Protect your camera for just pennies a day with the service coverage. Yeah, okay. How about no? Yeah, I'm not restarting right now. 
fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, why do I do these things to myself? Yeah, so the reason that it probably says IRDA only works on Windows 98 is because they didn't make any software for the Macintosh. So if I could find some software for the Mac that works with IRDA, which I don't know if it ever existed, to be honest with you, um, that might help. I, don't, I really don't know. Maybe if there was like some cell phone tool or whatever for sending and receiving stuff. What are you? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you're saying it says Windows 98, mine says 95. But this came out in 98, probably was sold 97. The iMac came out in 98. They're not going to update software to work on the iMac when you could just use USB. Kodak doesn't care. Oh, you meant 95. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think IRDA was sort of like a pipe dream. And yeah, Steve Jobs sold it to us in that keynote when he revealed the iMac and said, you could do IRDA. I don't know. Besides Apple Talk IRDA and besides Palm Pilots and stuff, I don't know if you could actually do the thing with the pictures. We're going to try. I don't give up that easily. We're going to give one more good college try. Alright, here we go. Oh, Adam, an Epson camera. Well, if any other thoughts come to mind, let me know. Like, it, it could be another piece of software, like uh, an Epson driver, uh, not driver, but a piece of software might might work. Who knows? Um, Alright, so what, 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 what is that? What, what happened here? I don't see any Kodak software. That's cool. I bet it only installed like an extension or something like that. Or not. Here we go. Yeah, Photoshop plugin. And <laughs> that's that's all that it did, folks. All it did was a, a plugin for Photoshop. Now I wonder. I wonder. It's going to want USB. There's no way it's going to work with IRDA. It's going to want USB, wouldn't it? Well, see, the only cameras that I could find with IRDA without digging into piles and piles of crap were these. What image archives for open image? Oh, okay. Um, documents, sure. Yeah, it's not detecting it because it's not plugged in, so that's not going to be happy. Well, poo. Yeah, see, if I... Here's the USB cable. Let's let's do it this way, then. Let's just see. Let's see how the USB works before we get too excited. Plug it into the keyboard. It's probably going to yell at us that it's going to use too much current, but... Yes, plug and play my butt. We're switching to connect on the camera. See you later, Thomas. <laughs> Will it work? Who the heck knows? <laughs> the software needed cannot be found. We just installed the darn thing. Are you kidding me? And Photoshop has no idea what to do either. <laughs> Freaking 
from the CD. We installed it from the CD. The CD is still here. Read me. Oh, goodness. Power PC, blah, 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 blah. It wants you to use a compact flash card adapter. So this isn't even telling you to use USB. Let's let's look at the darn manual. Let's see what it says for, for us petty Mac users. The Twain software. <laughs> oh gosh. This manual does not cover Macintosh stuff. It's just talking about Windows, 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 Windows. So that's nice. Thank you, manual. Nope. Kodak Easy Software. Yeah, it's just a middle finger when you go to the Macintosh side of things. Alright, here's the Easy Share software, which I think is a Windows only. Yes, sirree. Windows, 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 Windows. Well, there's that. So, I do have this USB compact flash adapter. Let, let me show you a problem that I discovered. No, I, I, I drove to the eBay seller's house to pick this up because I didn't want to pay $10 shipping on something I paid $10 for. And I'm glad I didn't, but I noticed this when I got home. The camera's not focused. Oh, there it is. It's actually focusing on it. Let me, let me uh, bring this up full screen so you can see my concern. Look right in the center. Yeah, that pin is not supposed to be like flopped over its shoulder there. That's a bent pin. And the slot below is actually for smart media cards. Sadly, it's the 3.3 volt, not the 5 volt. But uh, yeah, so this is a transcend adapter that is basically broken because, yeah. <sighs> now I do have one good compact flash card reader and that's in the monitor of this darn computer. Um, and I do have uh, one on the way. I got a Firewire one off eBay just today. So yeah, if you're not using USB, I guess Kodak wanted you to use <laughs> Firewire, a, a compact flash card adapter for your PowerBook or whatever. I mean, that's what this README document is saying on the, on the thing, but, um, my goodness, what the heck, man? I mean, this is this is saying like about the camera LCD. So, plug-in acquire software not included in your document also includes system requirements for installing. But da 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 da. Firmware. Ooh, Japanese firmware. Firmware instructions. Oh my goodness. Uh, upgrade camera. Very. You cannot revert to the previous version. Well, that's no fun. Okay, it's just for like flash. And, all right, well, I'm not going to deal with that today. That just sounds like more pain and suffering. Camera scripts. Okay. What the heck is this? Okay, you could run scripts on it. Cool. I guess you could run Doom on it. You could do a lot of things on it, but let me just see what else is in this installer. <laughs> but not too relevant. Is the Mac screen capture overexposed? Yes, there's something... Uh, we're, we're plugging in from an iMac. It's not going to be perfect. <laughs> so there is a bit of an overexposed thing going on here. Uh, I'm just seeing what it... Yeah, so all it did was this plugin. That's all this was. Yeah, so screw that. That's not going to be any fun.
All right, so we have Apple Talk and we have TCP IP for this thing. Let's try one more time for this infrared magic to work. And I'm getting a bit of a headache. Maybe I'm gonna call it call it a night. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. Whoa. Oh, the keyboard, the cable was hitting the keyboard. Alright, so it says connecting. Come on. There's a, there's a device in range. Hey, Kate! <laughs> Too high definition for your eyes. Now what's interesting is, this is not detecting the darn device. At all. Let me try and shield it. Maybe there's interference or something. It says there are no devices in range. Maybe that's because Apple Talk or something is connected. I don't know. Oh, boy. No, that's not what I want. Code ACK EEP! Save, please. Let's try again. Send! So this is with Apple Talk turned off with this. I don't know if that's going to help. Ooh, a giant Mackie. That sounds like fun. I have a little mini Mackie over here. He's hiding under a pile of crap. I'm sorry. Let me, let me dig him out. Here he is. Hi. Help me. Help me. Back in the pile you go. Yeah, so we're, we're making the camera get close to the iMac here. It's not happy. Let's move the keyboard so we can actually... Ooh. <laughs> the iMac almost fell over. Hold, please. Let's... Yeah, 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 yeah. Eep yourself. Yes, I know TCP is still using it, but I was hoping maybe that's something... It, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And these wires are, like, dangerously close to blocking things. Let me, um... I have a dead PowerBook battery. We'll use that to prop up the camera. How about that? There we go. So no cables are in the way. And you can see on the side camera now, there we go, there's the camera pointing right into the iMac. <laughs> Great, thank you, Anthony. All right, and uh, the other Thomas B. Make sure you send me an email too if you haven't done so already. All right, so this control panel is wonky. Flock of Mackies. All right, let's uh, go to TCP IP and just go back to Ethernet like a normal person. Eep. No devices in range. Well, let's try that again. Now it shows it, but it doesn't know what to, to do with it. Oh, wait, what if we open Photoshop? <laughs> Would that be hilarious? No, it won't. It's not going to do anything. Uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not doing anything. Ah, poo. Uh, Jaguar does support it, just as a serial connector, but I don't think that's going to do anything anyway. Um, but... Take a screenshot. I mean, that's neat. So that explains why that uh, Apple Extra was not on the iMac, because this does not do IRDA, it will only do IR Talk. So that's what this message means. And if we tell it to guide me, 
It says, in order to send and receive items, you'll need to select IR Talk in the infrared Apple and Apple Talk control panels. I say, okay. Look at that, it's guiding me. <laughs> and it's selecting something that is not there. <laughs> oh, you poor guy. So, yeah, now that's what's interesting in here is let's see, if I go to Apple Talk and I go back to this. Any day now. Eep. This stream was cursed from the start. It tells you what. So now it's by default on Apple Talk. Let's send this again. And let's see if it detects anything in range still. It might only be looking for Apple Talk compatible. Oh, never mind. There goes that theory. Yeah, so it sees the darn thing. <laughs> but whatever, the, the way it's sending data or looking for that handshake, the iMac is like, what do you want me to do? I don't, I don't know. Yes, I used IRDA to print via my Palm Pilot, and that was a lifesaver. I did that in school all the time, Kate. That was a lifesaver. Because I had notes on there that uh, I would need, and it would be like an open note test, and all I did was print it out like five minutes before the test. It was great. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that there is nothing in the iMac for IRDA file transfer. There is IR talk file transfer, but that is not what we need. We need IRDA file transfer. And um, let's see if there's anything else here. I think we're going to be stuck here, folks. This might need a take three. <laughs> Sharing files, uh, connecting to a network, using communication. See, that's the thing. We're not sharing files. Printing. Yeah, see, this is all about Apple Talk. Yeah, this is not really going to help us. No. Oh, boy. I do have a printer that does IR talk, but I bought the dongle for it and it didn't seem to want to work either. So maybe I'm just cursed to never have any IR talk stuff working at all. How about that? Uh, yeah. So, um. Poo. I mean, there is a serial port on here, but there's also USB. So. What's interesting is if we look if we look at the Kodak README, Adam, it'll say you need a Power Mac, uh, and you need a card reader and a compact flash card adapter. So, who knows? Yes, that's the article I uh, found earlier, Joe. So yeah, that that talks about the PowerBook 190 and the 5300, which both do IR talk. So technically, that send and receive uh, application can do IR talk, and that's great. But this camera doesn't talk IR talk. That's confusing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this this mentions a little about anything else. Let's see. Yeah, it talks about a card reader here. Removing the memory card for the card reader. I have a feeling that these cables are... Yes, there's a compact flash card in there. I have a feeling that these cables are PC only. Especially because the manual is having nothing to do with the Macintosh. That's stupid, but... I did see one of these on eBay with the compact flash PCI card uh, adapter dealie. But I didn't get that one because I didn't think I needed it. I do have a lovely 8 megabyte 
whole eight megabyte. This is a Kodak uh, Digital Science branded picture card. Come on, come on, focus there. Yeah, there you go. Whole eight megabytes there. from 1997 how about that so Steve Jobs promised a beaming of digital photos and the only way I could think of beaming digital photos to one machine or the other is Apple talk at this point um, I could fix that pin but I did buy a firewire adapter so and I do have a compact flash card reader in this computer this monitor so I, I was looking at files before um, Adam do you remember what <laughs> Do you remember what Epson camera that was? I'm, I'm wondering if there's a piece of software or something. Let's let's do a just a, a let's do a, an internet search. Uh, Epson camera IRDA. Let's see what comes up. Because if we could find the software for that. Maybe, oh, here we go. No, that's, that's an infrared camera. That's not going to help. And that's a printer. That doesn't help. Well, if you remember at any point in time, that would be cool. Let's see. Epson ELPD IRDA. How about that? Nope. Epson IRDA... Camera, photo, transfer, whatever. Nope. 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 Well, that's a big lot of nope. <laughs> well, I'm a bit perplexed and frustrated. Um... Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I mean, I can sit here and search for a different camera software all night, and I don't think we're going to have any problems. Uh, it could be an Epson, could be a Nikon, could be a Canon, could be a Kodak, could be whatever. Not sure. It has been a learning experience, and at least if you learn nothing else from this, if you learn nothing else, it's at least how to properly configure files so ResEdit will open them correctly. Well, that programs will open them correctly via ResEdit, so there you go. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> Let's eject this disk before I leave it in there forever. My uh, Leopard install CD is in one of the I'm, many I'm, uh, Power Mac G5s I have. I have no idea which one. Probably in the quad, but just a guess. It just kind of downloaded. Well, see, that's the thing. This, See, this camera is waiting for a connection from the iMac to say, Okay, go, send the... Ooh, I just had a thought. I just had a thought. I don't think this is going to work, but hear me out. Hear me out. The Kodak camera will only actually send the file when it receives word from the device that it can send it. What if we initiate the connection with the other Kodak camera? So the sending camera says, okay, I'm going to send the file. Then we quickly just point the darn IR connector to the iMac and see what happens. Probably nothing. Worth a shot. So, open this up again. So, let's turn off the Apple Talk, but let's just have the, the TCP IP. How about that? And this is probably the last thing I try with this before I throw the camera out the window. <laughs> well, how IR, IRDA usually works is they have to communicate. One has to say, yes, send this, or yes, I'm in receiving mode, or whatever. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to always be in receiving mode because then that, that receiver is going to be like non-stop working overtime.
Yeah, see, if the only thing that uh, I'm thinking of with that Epson uh, uh, Nokia thing about it receiving the file or whatever, the Nokia is probably sending something in um, in a way that the infrared thing is, is connecting, uh, expecting it to. So, for example, um, a serial tool or whatever. Well, see, IR Talk is different. There was a control panel, but I believe that's for IR Talk. And this is not going to work anyway, but we're going to... Why not? All right. So, <laughs> so certain are you. All right. So we're going to go to receive. I'm going to go to send. Continue. It's going to say connecting. I'm going to say receive on here. All right. It says sending. I pulled away this camera. Let's see if it is doing anything. The control panel does not even see... Any devices in range, that's reassuring. And it's probably not communicating, hey, I'm a device, hey, I'm a device, because it's trying to send the darn picture. Transfer of photos was interrupted. Not all pictures were sent. Let's try that again. I mean, these things are all proprietary, so who knows what the heck it's doing. Let's put them in sort of a triangle here. Yeah, it's sending it, but the progress bar is moving along, so I, I feel like... In fact, we could test this theory. Let's see if we get any blinkity-blink from the receiving. Yes, yeah, see? The receiving camera is sending signals to the sending camera. That's what the blinking is on the IR port. So data is being sent, and some data, at least saying, hey, look, I got the file, is being sent to the receiving camera. So that handshake, that back and forth, is why the iMac is simply not doing diddly squat, because it is not talking to the camera correctly and uh, looks like the photo was sent that's uh, it's 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 working camera to camera it's just not working otherwise so. all right yeah so I don't have Mac OS 10 installed on this I could try that on a power book that I think I have but that's not today because I have no idea where that power book is Turn that camera off. Turn this camera off. Unplug these cables. Ah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, that was fun. Huh? Um, <laughs> the receiving camera is sending data to the sent camera. Probably just to say, all right, I got eight kilobits out of whatever. It's probably just a status thing. That's all it is. <laughs> Try something quadrate 40 AV. No, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Well, it's almost 11 p.m. here. I have to give the bunnies their meds and such. Um, anybody have any questions or anything you want to talk about before I, uh, I sign off? Uh, Chris2021, if you're trying to email things, uh, put links in the YouTube chat. YouTube doesn't allow that. Make sure the link for you. I don't see any links from you. If you're the one to send me something, send me an email. Mac84TV at gmail.com Again, Mac84TV at gmail.com. Chris, if you want to send me something, that's probably the best way for you to do it. Um, but, yeah, any questions or anything you have, let me know. I think it's interesting that uh, the iMac only has an orange light on. That's because the CRT is not engaged. Because we are bypassing the CRT going to our VGA capture device, but this is the iMac that you see on the screen. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting that the, the light stays orange and the CRT is not powered up. So there you go. 9.2. Well, I, I do want to keep 8.6 on here, but uh, maybe we have to play around with that. Who knows? I could do a boot it or something. But I'm not doing that today. But <laughs> Alex's link showed for me. Let me scroll up here. Oh, I see it now. All right, some links come through, some don't. Who knows? All right. Yeah, so the iMac does not do IR talk. It does IRDA. 
and the PowerBook 2400 and the early PowerBook G3 actually does both. I mean, it could be that this Kodak camera is not using IRDA. It might be using something proprietary. I don't know. Actually, no, it is using IRDA because it actually says here IRDA. Where is it? Hold on. Hold on. IRDA 1.0. Yep, so that's what it says in here. So it is using the IRDA standard. So IR talk would not apply. So what I'm going to be doing offline is looking for a piece of software or utility, anything, that is designed for receiving IRDA information. Whether that be a tool that was for mobile phones or for cameras or scanners or I don't know. Uh, for a Macintosh, for a, a Mac OS 8, Mac OS 9 system that is made for receiving IR information. There has to be something out there. Maybe, hopefully. Um, that is, I think, where we are at, uh, at this point in time. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry, just following up here. Crash the Finder when installed. Do you have the right drivers, Cody? Are you installing it on an old open on a old world ROM or a new world ROM Mac? Uh, oh, Alex is a mod. That's why. Uh, okay. Uh, I think the big thing is you just don't have an IRD save receiver program. Yeah, that's what I think is a problem. Uh, I think it's a software problem, Brian. You're correct. Yeah, I have a printer that does IRDA. I don't know if it's gonna, if it's gonna do, if it's gonna do work or photos. But printer's all the way over there, and the IRDA doesn't really want to work on it. So, but sent to email. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna be looking for some software. I I don't know if one actually exists because one, it would have to be for IRDA that's built into the Max, and there weren't a lot of machines that did IRDA. Um, spec used for IR picture transfer. Okay. Let's see if I could whip up your email really quickly. Don't look like it came through yet. Nope, updated just now. Might be in my spam box or something. But, yeah. Any other ideas <laughs> before we call it quits? I'm sorry, I thought this would work this time. We, we sure did try, at least. We got the infrared software on here, so maybe we could do some IR Apple Talk stuff in the future. Uh, talk to our Palm Pilots or our Newtons or something like that. Maybe a printer. Eh, that might be fun. Um, I'm not gonna, giving up with the camera, though. There has to be some way, even if it's using virtual PC or some awful thing, uh, for that to work. So maybe maybe that'll be fun. This camera got warm using IRDA, which is manual states that, the, um, um, that it uses a lot of power. So that seems to be right. Um, looking for my USB RDA adapter. I think there was software in it. Adam, that would be excellent if you could find that. Please send that my way. Um, so if anybody has any USB to IRDA software that came with the Macintosh or for Macintosh, let me know. Two IMAX face-to-face. -face. Maybe we could do that. PowerBook might be easier to do that. Because um, you could actually have like a, a multi-machine Apple Talk IR network or whatever. So, Looking forward to part three, as am I. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I guess that's about it for now. Um, don't forget to take, check out TinkerDifferent.com. And I'm going to write it here so everyone can read it. And it's a new form. I'll talk about it briefly before I sign off. If I could spell. There we go. And it has to be... Of course, we can't change. There we go. Chicago. There we go. The perfect font. So TinkerDifferent.com is a web forum, and they also have a Discord thing as well. But it's primarily a forum, a community, for people who like to tinker with electronics, whether it be Apple stuff, um, or PC stuff, or Commodore stuff, or Amiga stuff. Whether you're an expert or a novice, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This community is open to everyone. If you just like looking at this stuff, or if you're a hardware or soldering wizard or whatever, that's great. Um, you don't have to have any specific skill sets, uh, but you go to TinkerDifferent.com, you sign up. Uh, I am one of the members who uh, helped get this thing going. A lot of talented people did. I'm not going to start naming names because I'll be here for a while. But a lot of people did. It wasn't just me. I just, you know, helped out where I could in little little places. 
but um, it's a great website. I hope you sign up for there. It's brand new. It just launched a few days ago. Um, it's a, a forum that uh, has spots for Apple stuff, for Commodore stuff, for Amiga stuff, for IBM stuff, for stuff that isn't really computer related. There's a, a few things there. Uh, Adam is stuff on there. He, he he says he likes the forum. That's excellent. I know um, a few others in the chat are on here as well. So check that out if you have not done so already. And register. I'm there, of course, and I'll probably be posting a, a, a forum post asking, uh, hey, <laughs> anybody have IRDA software for the iMac? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's something that's really cool. It just launched, and uh, we'll be talking a bit about that more, I'm sure. As things go on but uh, please consider signing up to the site it's something I'm very proud of um, you know it, it took us um, uh, you know it, it wasn't wasn't a quick project this you know we'll be working on this for months and months and months um, so I'm very happy to finally see it released and see all the great content that is uh, flowing on there so keep that up and uh, yeah like the stream if you haven't done so already and if you're in the chat that means you're subscribing to the channel so thank you very much for your subscribe um, Almost about to hit 84,000, 8,400, not 84,000, 8,400 subscribers. I was thinking of maybe doing something special, maybe a stream or something for hitting 8.4 because it is Mac 84. So maybe we'll do something like that. I don't know. But uh, that's just some thoughts. But um, yeah, that's about it. But I hope this uh, has been an <laughs> accelerating stream. Sorry we couldn't get it to work again. But um, hey, we, we found some things out with the camera, so maybe we get something to work. And, uh, yeah, I don't know Cody, but, um, probably not new web software. doesn't like old web browsers, but, uh, that's about it. But thank you very much for watching guys. Take care. And, uh, I'll catch you on another stream. And I have some scripted videos coming out real soon. Uh, one just released about, uh, my adventures at VCF East. So if you haven't seen that, please check that out. That was a lot of fun. Um, that's about it. Uh, take care. Bye.